Now, in the last few days, there has been a lot of debate about uh, this 1.76 lakh crore worth of surplus uh, that the Reserve Bank of India is transferring to the government. Uh, and there has been a lot of questions. Uh, there have been a lot of questions about how exactly the RBI arrived at that such a, such a large amount. Uh, now that the Reserve Bank of India has released its annual report for the financial year ended, ended uh, June 30, 2019, uh, we have a fair understanding on where that money came from. Uh, and just uh, the first look at the RBI's uh, annual report uh, would tell you that its, uh, its annual income for the financial year 2019 uh, came up to 1.93 lakh crore, and that is more than double of what it made in FY18. So obviously, uh, that is a large increase uh, in its annual income that has helped the RBI uh, transfer a large amount of surplus to the government. Uh, how exactly this 1.93 lakh crore number comes, uh, for that we have to look at each individual items and just to, un uh, just to get a sense of it, most of this increase has come because the other income for the Reserve Bank of India has gone up. So let's look at some of the components of the total income uh, that have contributed in this increase. So uh, firstly is the additional interest income of about 33,000 odd crore. Uh, that has come primarily because the RBI conducted a lot of open market operations during this financial year in FI19 uh, and because of that it accumulated a lot of government securities and thereby there has been an increase in the interest income that it has earned. Uh, second and probably the more important uh, uh, component of the entire uh, annual income is the revaluation gain on uh, the foreign exchange that the RBI holds uh, and that has come up to about 29,000 crore. Uh, so just to get a sense of you know how exactly this happened, uh, the Reserve Bank of India moved uh, to the weighted average cost model of valuing its uh, foreign exchange reserves. Earlier it was looking at it on a weekly basis and now this weighted average cost model according to the Reserve Bank of India had a net impact of about 21,000 odd crore. So that is why the total gains uh, from the foreign exchange reserves came up to about 29,000 crore. Uh, the next important item uh, is also the contingency right back. Now, um, uh, as part of its uh, assessment of the RBI's capital, economic capital framework, uh, the Bimal Jalan committee had suggested that the RBI is, is holding excess provisions uh, and therefore probably some of those provisions can be written back. Uh, so that 52,618 crore has been that contingency uh, right back that the Reserve Bank of India has done in FY19, which obviously added to the surplus. Uh, the other additional sources have added about 11,000 odd crore, but obviously some of the uh, the, uh, the top three are the f uh, more important components of the of the overall income, uh, which has helped the RBI uh, not only increase its income but also then transfer more money to the government. Now, now that there has been some kind of revaluation as well as uh, some reassessment of the RBI's uh, reserves, let's look at some where exactly these reserves stand. Uh, so the contingency fund, uh, remember that we told you there was some right back in the provisions, uh, so that has come down from 2.3 lakh crore to about 1.96 lakh crore as a direct result of that uh, of that right back of provisions. Uh, the next and probably the more important uh, sort of reserve to look at uh, is the currency and gold revaluation account. So that, uh, if you uh, if I told if you remember what I told you earlier about the weighted average cost model, uh, because of that, uh, the overall balance in the CGRA has come down uh, from 6.9 lakh crore to 6.64 lakh crore. So obviously, uh, all of this is adding into that additional income that the Reserve Bank of India has made uh, during this financial year, and thereby uh, to the actual surplus that it is transferring to the government.